So, you know, God does allow suffering in our life. But then you have to ask the question, well, if God allows these, this suffering, isn't it unfair? Because God makes some people go through more suffering than others. And this is why suffering, I believe, can only be understood or can only be understood as fair in the context of eternity. Because if there is no eternity, then it is unfair, right? Because if this life is all we have, and some people have like, you know, they're born disabled and their family has to take care of, they have this really hard life. How is that fair compared to somebody that, you know, maybe just has a financial problem and that's the suffering that they're going through? You know, they'll think, you know, I, I would prefer to have that suffering, you know, rather than the worst of suffering. But it's because there, there is an eternity, you know, God will make sure that the rewards are fair. Uh, let's just go to Luke chapter 12. We won't read it all, but let's just go to the end there. 14. Verse 48, it says here, But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. So at Judgment Day, there will be this great equalizing. If you've been given less in your life, God will give you more. If you do for God what you've been given. If you've been given a lot and you do a little for God, you're going to be rewarded with less. We have the two famous parables, right? We have the parable of the pounds and we have the parable of the talents. And what we learn from these parables is that God rewards us according to what we do with the abilities that we have. So if somebody has less abilities, if they do what they can with what they have, they may be rewarded in eternity with more than the person that has a lot, like us. All of us are very uh, well off here. All of us are very blessed here. If we don't do a lot for God, we may end up with less than somebody that had less than us that didn't do as much for God as maybe we have done. Because God in inevitably will equal the scales. And this is why we can say that the suffering is fair because if somebody suffers more in this life than somebody else, they are in effect given less than somebody else. But if they do for God what they have, God will in inevitably make it fair at the judgment. But, you know, we have to keep it in perspective because, you know, number one, we have to keep that in perspective that God will inevitably weigh the scales uh, and make it fair. But another thing is, you know, when we look at a verse, like say in Romans 18, Romans 8, 18 says here, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So the suffering that we go through in this life is nothing compared to what we will get in eternity. So we need to keep that perspective. We need to look to heavenly things because, yeah, if we focus on the suffering in this life, it seems like a big thing. But if we look to eternity and we keep our eyes on the prize and we keep our eyes on the goal, which is to win people to Christ and to work towards that next world, the suffering in this world will seem smaller. You know, James says, you know, for what is your life? It is even a vapor which appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. And that's another thing to keep in mind when we think about suffering. That what, what is life? It's so short. But even if you did go through suffering in this life, what is that compared to all of eternity? It's going to be a vapor. It's going to vanish away. It doesn't always feel like a vapor when you're going through it. But um, compared to eternity, it is. And we have to see that uh, by faith.